had two young kids at the time. So I would work in the basement. And when we got off the school bus, I'd play, you know, basketball with them or football and be a dad. And in between, I'd be like Willy Wonka coming up with these crazy drinks and bringing them up and running them out to the parents and to the kids and saying, what do you think of this flavor? What do you think of that flavor? And that's, that's how it started. I'm excited to welcome my good friend, Ben Weiss, founder and former CEO of Buy Beverages to Molner's Table. You may not have heard of Ben, but chances are you or someone in your family loves the drink Ben created. Ben started Buy from his basement in Princeton, New Jersey, and he introduced something that was missing from grocery store shelves, a low calorie, all natural antioxidant beverage that packed tons of flavor. And seven years later, Ben sold by for a whopping $1.7 billion. Ben shares his long road to success in his new book, Base Mentality. Ben, welcome to Molner's Table. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks for having me. You literally started by in your basement in Princeton, yeah. New Jersey. That's and it was always an up and down. You know, I create stuff that either sells, I make money, it doesn't sell. You know, I don't know how to pay for rent. Uh, and this was one of those ebb and flows where I made some money. Uh, off of Choc Elixir, which is a drink I made for Godiva. And I was able to pay off a lot of the debt and then for the first time own my own home. And that was a townhouse in Princeton, New Jersey. So for some of those watching that aren't familiar with Bai, describe the drink. So Bai is what I would say big, bold flavor that you can trust. If I were to sum it up, you know, five calories, nothing artificial. I always, everything in there is, comes from a fruit or vegetable and you can grow it in your backyard. Well, it seems to me at the core, you didn't like the notion of, of these companies pushing sugar. Well, listen, you're talking to a guy who grew up drinking, you know, soda and sugary drinks and, you know, and it's because I love soda, the flavor of soda, that I wasn't willing to be that guy who just started drinking water, right? But that being said, uh, in I think it was like 2015 or 16, it was the first year that water outsold soda, CSDs in the US and that was a big deal because people were running from bad ingredients. They weren't running from classic taste and flavor and big bold flavor. Ben, I've known you for a long time. I guess we met, I think in 2013. And I remember early on you talking about a bevolution, yep. a term that you've coined. Bevolution was a term we used a lot, a lot. And we continue to use it today. And it's really about getting people to rethink what they drink uh, giving them options that aren't sugar laden and better for you. It bonded the whole company together. We had wristbands that say, join the Bevolution. I realized it's not just about the people that are working here. You know, I have $60 million of other people's money on my shoulders too. So all of those things gave us an edge. Everything was about why we do what we do. It wasn't about buy, it was about the Bevolution. And it just hit you right in the face. Describe making a Super Bowl ad and the impact it had on the brand. So we came up, and then one of the proudest things, we came up with that commercial in-house, Chad and his team, Chad Portis and his team. So I felt like people didn't know how to pronounce the name. So I figured if we just sing, people would remember that. We went to Justin and his manager, Rick Yorn. JT loved it. And somebody, it was, I think it was either JT or Rick, came up with Christopher Walken, which was absolutely genius. Bye, bye, bye. You could tangibly see the results of doing that because it's not cheap, mm -hmm. but it got great, um, it got a great reaction. You use a term to describe yourself. You call yourself a black sheep, but you think about a black sheep as someone who's a standout, yeah. not an outcast. <laughs> Can you talk about that? Right, it's about breaking a few rules along the way, doing things different, but doing it for the right reason. It's funny, I used to say this, I never thought about the customer, right? Because what I, what I was doing for the customer, they had no idea. It wasn't about what went into the bottle. I was always very bullish on what was in the bottle. I knew it was a better for you option. There are other better for you options, but what we did for uh, the customers, we fought the fight with, everybody that tried to marginalize it so it doesn't get to them, right? And that requires a little bit of black sheep mentality. I'm gonna challenge you with a speed round. Mm. I'm gonna put 60 seconds on the clock. 
When was the last time you drank a sugar soda? I don't know, maybe 15 years ago at a, at a ball game. What's your favorite professional sports team? J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. A recent book you read? Shoe Dog, Phil Knight. An entrepreneur or black sheep that you admire? The GOAT, Steve Jobs. A business you wish you thought of first? Starbucks. Tell me something that people are gonna learn about you in this book that may surprise them. That I got arrested on the morning of one of my big, <laughs> you know this, yeah, <laughs> of one of my biggest meetings while talking to my two-year-old son at the time. All right, finally, a superpower you wish you had. Uh, I think x-ray vision wouldn't be wasted on me. Uh, so talk to me about hiring decisions you made and how critical that was along yep. the way. Is a bunch of randoms, rebels, and royals. And you get the right mix because you can't just get a bunch of royals. You can't just get a bunch of people that are from the industry, have a great resume because the industry is broken and it, and it, it breeds bad habits and you need people who like don't know anybody. My dad, you know, 70 years old, never sold a bottle of anything in his life was my best sales guy because he will, he would not let me fail, you know, and he was relationship selling. He didn't know anything about the beverage industry and it benefited him. But so how did you identify people that were going to be great in these positions? And what happened when, when you started to have doubts? The minute I identified that you're no longer dreaming alongside me and I'm doing the dreaming for you, that's when it's going to go like this. You attached pretty interesting people to this dream along the way. Zach Brown is mentioned here in the forward. Tell us about your relationship and your friendship with Zach Brown. How does that happen? So Zach um, came to us because he had these eat and greets before his concerts. And at those eat and greets where he and the band serve fresh Southern cuisine to, to fans, uh, he used to have, I think, Honest Tea. Uh, sp I'm not sponsoring it, but he used to serve Honest Tea. And then he found by on a hunting trip with, with one of his friends and he called me, he called up our offices or his people called up our offices and said, I'd love to serve that at the eat and greets. So I said, okay, great. It's just another celebrity trying to, you know, get some money out of us. So I sent my assistant at the time to go to one of his eat and greets and just to see what it was like. And she said, it's amazing. We have to, you know, do something. And I got on the phone with that guy and he knew more about buy than half my salespeople. He is one of the most genuine people I have ever met in my life. Now, I'm a fan of Shark Tank. Of okay, so I'm not a fan of Shark Tank because I think Shark Tank is the last thing an entrepreneur should be doing is going to sharks to help launch a, a brand. We had no venture capital money in our business. It was all a bunch of friends and family and people who took a bet on the jockey as much as the horse. And that's what you want. You want friendly investors. You want people like yourself who say, Ben, I trust you. Go run hard. The last thing a, a, a young entrepreneur, a young business needs is, you know, somebody who they feel can just make it rain. There's no rain making. There's none of that in your first year into a business. You know what it is? You got to roll up your sleeves and you got to do the hard, unsexy work. Ben, what led you to start Crooked Marker? Well, this Crook and Marker is my new obsession. Um, it is truly gonna change refreshment in the alcohol industry because what you're seeing with hard seltzer and the growth that that category is experiencing is only a bellwether of what's to come. So I think the great opportunity is what lies beyond hard seltzer. Today's uh, conversation is sponsored by my friends at Life Is Good. I'm wearing their shirt. And uh, you know I love wearing comfortable t-shirts. Katie will tell you I wear these all the time. Uh, but beyond this, I love their dedication to spreading optimism, kindness, and gratitude, something we can all get behind. So in true life is good fashion, I like to ask my guests, tell me something that's good in your life. Well, I've got two healthy children, a great wife, and I am fortunate enough to now once again be surrounded by a bunch of dreamers that are disrupting another category. Um, and that's my lifeblood. Uh, and it's good that I'm able to find that again because I'm not a guy that's just gonna sit on a beach. Ben, you are amazing. I mean, you really are an awesome entrepreneur. And thank you for this, by the way. It means yeah. the world. Okay. I'd rather do it with nobody else. Thanks, pal. Maybe, Katie. I'll, right. just... <laughs> I'll see you yeah. later. All right.
Okay. okay. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>